Darwinian evolution and the world of mathematics are completely incompatible with each other. The main reason why Darwinian evolution and mathematics are completely incompatible with each other is that Darwinian evolution is based on a naturalistic or materialistic worldview in which it is held that only matter is real, that the world is just physical, and that there are, is no supernatural or metaphysical existence, or that if there is, it has no impact on our physical world. That is to say that Darwinian evolution is based on a materialistic view of reality called methodological naturalism, which holds that all possible scientific explanations for reality are exhausted by purely natural and or material explanations. The fatal flaw with presupposing methodological naturalism, as the following papers and videos show, is that methodological naturalism denies the reality of agent causality right off the bat, which is something that each of us experience firsthand. And where Darwinian evolution is based on a materialistic view of reality, which denies that anything beyond nature exists, on the other hand, mathematics, which provides the backbone for all science, engineering, and technology, as these following references indicate. Mathematics itself exists in a transcendent, beyond space and time realm, which is not reducible to any possible material explanation. This transcendent mathematical realm has been referred to as a Platonic mathematical world. As the following article points out, Mathematical Platonism enjoys widespread support and is frequently considered the default metaphysical position with respect to mathematics, and that arguments for mathematical Platonism typically assert that mathematical en entities are not con constituents of the spatio-temporal realm. Simply put, mathematics itself, contrary to the materialistic presuppositions of Darwinists, does not need the physical world in order to exist. And yet Darwinists, although they deny that anything beyond nature exists, need this transcendent world of mathematics in order for their theory to be considered scientific in the first place. The predicament that Darwinists find themselves in, in regards to denying the reality of this transcendent world of mathematics, and yet needing validation from this transcendent world of mathematics in order to be considered scientific in the first place, should be the very definition of self-refuting that we find in dictionaries. As David Berlinski states in the following article, there is no argument against religion that is not also an argument against mathematics. Mathematicians are capable of grasping a world of objects that lies beyond space and time. The number four, after all, did not come into existence at a particular time, and it is not going to go out of existence at another time. It is neither here nor there. Nonetheless, we are in some sense able to grasp the number by the faculty of our minds. Mathematical intuition is utterly mysterious. So for that matter is the fact that mathematical objects such as the Lie group or the differential manifold 
have the power to interact with elementary particles or accelerating forces. But these are precisely the claims that theologians have always made as well, that human beings are capable by an exercise of their devotional abilities to come to some understanding of the deity, and the deity, although beyond space and time, is capable of interacting with material objects. To further back up Berlinski's claim that mathematical objects have the power to interact with elementary particles, it has now been shown that immaterial information has a thermodynamic content and that immaterial information is its own distinct entity that is separate from matter and energy, a distinct physical entity that in spite of being immaterial, does indeed have the power to interact with matter and energy. Here are a few references that drive this point home. In the following article, George Ellis argues for the, caus uh, the causal ethicity Ethicy of non-physical entities. Of particular interest is his argument for the causal ethicy of computer programs. Although the preceding evidence is certainly very strong evidence for the physical reality of immaterial information, the coup de grace for demonstrating that immaterial information is its own distinct physical entity that is separate from matter and energy is quantum teleportation, where it is shown that photons aren't disappearing from one place and appearing in another. Instead, it's the information that's being teleported through quantum entanglement. And although some mathematicians who are of the atheistic persuasion may be tempted to believe that this transcendent platonic mathematical world can exist without God, yet, due to Gödel's incompleteness theorem, and as these following references make clear, they would be wrong to believe that. Even Stephen Hawking himself, in his book, The Grand Design, where he sought to find a mathematical theory of everything, reluctantly conceded in that book that Gödel's incompleteness theorem proves that there are limits to what can be ascertained by mathematics. The following article puts the implications of Gödel's incompleteness theorem for mathematics more clearly as such. We cannot construct an ontology that makes God dispensable. Secularists can dismiss this as a mere exercise within predefined rules of the game of mathematical logic, but that, but that is sour grapes for it was the secular side that hoped to substitute logic for God in the first place. Gödel's critique of the continuum hypothesis has the same implications of his incompleteness theorems. Mathematics will nev never will create the sort of closed system that sorts reality into neat boxes. Kurt Gödel himself stated, in materialism, all elements behave the same. It is mysterious to think of them as spread out and automatically united. For something to be a whole, it has to have an additional object, say a soul or a mind. Moreover, besides mathematics being incomplete, and as Dr. Bruce Gordon points out in the following article, the evidence from cosmology and quantum mechanics now also proves that the physical universe is itself 
also causally incomplete. Specifically, he states, the physical universe is causally incomplete and therefore neither self-originating nor self-sustaining. And he also states that the world of space, time, matter, and energy is dependent on a reality that transcends space, time, matter, and energy. The transcendent reality cannot merely be a platonic realm of mathematical descriptions, for such things are causally inert abstract entities that do not affect the material world. Rather, the transcendent reality on which our universe depends must be something that can exhibit agency, a mind that can choose among it the infinite variety of mathematical descriptions and bring into an existence a reality that cons corresponds to a consistent subset of them. That is what breathes fire into the equation and makes a universe for them to describe. And in the following article and video, Dr. Bruce Gordon goes into much more detail and gives an excellent defense of the specific scientific evidences from cosmology and quantum mechanics, which now clearly demonstrate that the reality we inhabit does indeed bear the hallmark of transcendent intelligent causation. Darwinists since they presuppose reductive materialism to be true, simply have no explanation for why the entire physical universe should be dependent on a reality that transcends space, time, matter, and energy. Nor do they have any clue for why the entire physical universe should itself be describable by a transcendent world of mathematics in the first place. Whereas the Christian founders of modern science, on the other hand, fully expected to find mathematical laws in the universe since they believed in a law giver. Here are a few quotes from some of the leading Christian founders of modern science which clearly show that they fully expected that they would find mathematical laws in nature since they believed in a lawgiver. Moreover, besides Darwinists not having any coherent explanation for why the universe should be describable by mathematics, Darwinists have even less of an explanation for why humans should have an innate and unique ability to understand this transcendent world of mathematics. In the following article, a group of leading evolutionary scientists conceded, after decades of extensive research, that they have essentially no explanation of how and why our linguistic computations and rep representations evolved. Charles Darwin himself, as well as other atheists of his time, held that human thought was merely a secretion of the brain as the liver secretes bile. Yet the problem that mathematics presents for the Darwinian belief that human thought is merely a secretion of the brain is fairly profound. As David Berlinski puts it, why should a limited and finite organ such as the human brain have the power to see into the heart of, of matter and mathematics? These are subjects that have nothing to do with the Darwinian business of scrabbling up the greasy pole of life. It is as if the liver, in addition to producing bile, were to demonstrate the a, unexpected ability to play the violin. This is a question that Darwinian biology has not yet answered.
modern day Darwinists following in the steps of Alan, Alan Turing, who believed that he was merely a Turing machine, which is to say that Turing believed he was basically a computer, rather than now claiming that human thought is a quote-unquote secretion of the brain, are now fond of saying that human thought is merely a form of computing. And although Alan Turn and modern-day Darwinists may be fond of saying that human thought is merely a form of computing, Turn's very first paper, which outlined the basics of the Turing machine and laid the foundation for computers, as well as outlining the halting problem for computers, Turing's very first paper smashes the idea that human thinking is merely a form of computing. As Gregory Chaitin states in the following video, if you look at Turing's first paper when he points out that machines have limits because there are numbers, in fact most numbers cannot be calculated by any machine, he is showing the power of the human mind to imagine things that escape what any machine could ever do. You see, so that may go against his own philosophy. Turn may think of himself as a machine, but his very first paper is smashing machines. It's creating machines, and then it is pointing out their devastating limitations. The following article points out that Turing's work on the halting problem is actually an extension of Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Kurt Gödel himself stated that either mathematics is too big for the human mind or the human mind is more than a machine. Moreover, besides the halting problem undermining the atheist claim that human thought is merely a form of computation, there is another major flaw that is even more fatal to their belief that human thought is merely a computational process. That fatal flaw is Although humans can create information, and indeed humans do create information almost as a force of habit, Darwinian processes and computational processes in particular, due to the law of conservation of information, are shown to not be able to create information, as William Dembski and Robert Marx state in their following paper. Information does not magically materialize. It can be created by intelligence, or it can be shunted around by natural forces. But natural forces, and Darwinian processes in particular, do not create information. In fact, as the following paper shows, since computers cannot create information, the famous Turing test for artificial intelligence could be defeated by simply asking for a new axiom in mathematics. Human mathematicians are able to create axioms, but a computer program cannot do this without violating information conservation. In the following paper, mathematician James Franklin states, the intellect is immaterial and immortal. If today's naturalists do not wish to agree with that, there is a challenge for them. Don't tell me, show me. Build an artificial intelligence system that imitates genuine mathematical insight. There seem to be no promising plans on the drawing board. And here are a few more references along the same line pointing out some of the devastating limitations for computers in regards to computers ever achieving true intelligence. That Darwinian processes in general and 
computational processes in particular are now shown due to the law of conservation of information not to be able to create information should not be all that surprising. As was already previously shown in this video, information is its own distinct physical entity that is separate from matter and energy. As MIT mathematician Norbert Wiener once put it, the mechanical brain does not secrete thought as the liver does bile. And as the earliest earlier materialists claim, nor does it put it out in the form of energy as the muscle puts out its activity. Information is information, not matter or energy. No materialism which does not admit this can survive at the present day. Moreover, besides the inability to create information, the pop the following paper offers a mathematical critique of the claim that computers may someday be conscious. Simply put, the mathematical critique shows that in the most basic logical operation of computers, you have to put in two bits and you get out one. If the brain is integrated information in this fashion as the most implemented influential theories in the field hold that it must do, it would be it would have to be continuously hemorrhaging information. McGuire and his team have shown mathematically that computers can't handle any process that integrates information completely. If you accept that consciousness is based on total integration, then computers can't be conscious. And from another angle that also mathematically critiques the idea that computers may someday be conscious, the following paper states, in representing consciousness, consciousness mathematically, Song has shown that consciousness is not compatible with a machine. The brain and consciousness are linked together, but the brain does not produce consciousness. Consciousness is something altogether different and separate. The math doesn't lie. And even, and, and even greater mathematical proof that free will and consciousness will forever be beyond the explanatory power of natural processes comes from the mathematics of quantum mechanics. As John von Neumann stated in his book, The Mathematical Foundations of Quantum Mechanics, we must always divide the world into two parts, the one being the observed system, the other the observer. And as Stephen Barr points out in the following article, as long as only purely physical entities are involved, they are governed by an equation that says the probabilities don't jump. That's when, when Rudolf Piles was asked whether a machine could be an observer, he said no, explaining that the quantum mechanical description is in terms of knowledge, and knowledge requires somebody who knows, not a purely physical thing, but a mind. And in the following article entitled, The Trouble with Quantum Mechanics, Steven Weinberg states free will's primary role in the equations of quantum mechanics as such. If we regard the whole process of measurement as being governed by the equations of quantum mechanics, and these equations are perfectly deterministic, how do probabilities get into quantum mechanics? In the instrumentalist approach, humans are brought into the laws of nature at the most fundamental level. Thus, the instru instrumentalist approach turns its back on a vision that became possible after Darwin of a world governed by impersonal laws that control human behavior along with everything else. In quantum mechanics, 
these probabilities do not exist until people choose what to measure. Unlike the case of classical physics, a choice must be made. Albert Einstein of relativity fame and Eugene Wigner, who won a Nobel Prize for his work in quantum mechanics, are both on record as to considering it an, a, a miracle that man is able to accurately model the universe using mathematics. Specifically, Einstein stated, you find it strange that I consider the comprehensibility of the world to the extent that we are authorized to speak of such comprehensibility as a miracle or as an eternal mystery. Well, a priori, one should expect a chaotic world which cannot be grasped by the mind in any way. That is the miracle which is constantly reinforced as our knowledge expands. And along that same line, Eugene Wigner stated, Certainly it is hard to believe that our reasoning power was brought by Darwinian process of natural selection to the perfection which it seems to possess. It is difficult to avoid the impression that a miracle confronts us here. The miracle of the appropriateness of the language of mathematics from the formulation of the laws of physics is a wonderful gift which we neither understand nor deserve. And seeing as Charles Darwin himself stated, I would give absolutely nothing for the theory of natural selection if it would require miraculous additions at any one stage of descent, descent, then it should not be all that surprising to learn that Charles Darwin, number one, found his work in college level mathematics to be repugnant. And number two, that Charles Darwin introduced not a single mathematical equation into his book, Origin of Species. That is not to say that modern day Darwinists of the 20th and 21st century have not tried to apply the quote unquote miracle of mathematics to their theory of natural elect selection so as to give it a semblance of scientific credibility, but it, in a finding that should not be all that surprising, it has now been found that when modern day population geneticists do apply the miracle of mathematics to Darwin's theory of natural selection, that the mathematics of population itself falsifies natural selection. Here are a few papers that drive this point home. And here is an excellent video that further drives the point home of what is termed the waiting time problem for natural selection. In the video, Dr. Richard Sternberg states, Darwinism provided an explanation for the appearance of design and argued that there is no designer, or if you will, the designer is natural selection. If that's out of the way, if natural selection just does not explain the evidence, then the flip side of that is, well, things appear designed because they are designed. And when looking at natural selection from the physical perspective of what is actually going on, that is to say, when looking at natural selection with empirical evidence, then it is very easy to see exactly why natural selection is grossly inadequate as the supposed designer substitute that Darwinists have falsely imagined it to be. Many leading Darwinists, such as Larry Morin, 
who are familiar with the failings of natural selection within the mathematics of population genetics now champion what is termed the neutral theory of molecular evolution a theory which holds that at the molecular level most evolution evolutionary changes and most of the variation within and between species is not caused by natural selection but by genetic drift of mutant alleles that are neutral. In regards to the neutral theory of evolution, Larry Morgan stated the theory of genetic drift includes some of the most highly refined mathematical models in biology. Yet, what Larry Morin fails to mention in his claim that the theory of genetic drift includes some of the most highly refined mathematical models in biology is that the theory of genetic drift is actually the result of the failure of natural selection within the mathematics of population genetics. In the following article, Larry Morin quotes Austin Hughes who states, Darwinism asserts that natural selection is the driving force of evolutionary change. It is the claim of the neutral theory, on the other hand, that the majority of evolutionary change is due to chance. Thus, with natural selection being tossed aside by the mathematics of population genetics and by empirical evidence as the explanation for the appearance of design that we see in life, Darwinists did not accept such a devastating finding from mathematics as an outright falsification for their theory, as they should have done, but they are now instead reduced to arguing that the appearance of design that we see in life is basically the result of pure chance, with natural selection now playing a very negligible role, if any role at all. To call such a move on the part of Darwinists disingenuous would be an understatement. As William Murray comments in the following comment. One wonders what would have become of evolution had Darwin originally claimed that it was simply the accumulation of random neutral variations that generated all the deeply complex, organized, interdependent structures we find in biology. Would we even know his name today? What exactly is Darwin really famous for now? advancing a really popular, now disproven idea of natural selection along the lines of Lumiferous Ether. Without the er erroneous but powerful mean of survival of fittest to act as an opiate for the Victorian intelligentsia and as a rational for 20th century fascism, how might history have proceeded under the influence of the less victrolic maxim, survival of the happenstance? Moreover, the mathematics of population genetics goes even further than just throwing natural selection overboard as to undermining the Darwinian worldview from within. In the following video and article, Don Donald Hoffman has, through numerous computer simulations of population genetics, shown that if Darwinian evolution were actually true, then all of our observations of reality would be unreliable. And although Donald Hoffman tried to limit his results to just our visual perception, as the following article points out, and as Alvin Plantinga had pointed out years before Hoffman came along, there is no reason why Hoffman's results from population genetics do not also extend to the undermining of our cognitive faculties as well.
Thus, and what should be needless to say, a worldview that undermines the scientific method itself by holding all of our observation of observations of reality and all our cognitive faculties are unreliable is not a worldview that can ever be firmly grounded within the scientific method. Moreover, completely contrary to what Donald Hoffman had found from the mathematics of population genetics, conscious observation, far from being unreliable, is experimentally found to be far more integral to reality and far more reliable of reality than the mathematical than the mathematics of population genetics had predicted. In fact, in the following exper experiment, it was found that reality doesn't exist without an observer. Apparently, science itself could care less if Darwinists are forced to believe, because of the mathematics of population genetics, that their observations of reality are unreliable. Despite all the bluff and bluster you may hear from Darwinists on the internet, Darwinists simply have no realistic mathematical model to support their claims. For example, William Basner and John Sanford, when they applied realistic ratios of detrimental mutations to beneficial mutation to Ronald A. Fisher's supposed mathematical proof for Darwinian evolution, they found that Fisher's belief that he had developed a mathematical proof that fitness must always increase is falsified. In response to this recent paper by Basner and Sanford that falsified Fisher's supposed mathematical proof for Darwinian evolution, a Darwinist named Bob O'Hara tried to bring up the Price Equation, which is an equation that had supposedly solved some of the insurmountable difficulties that are found within Fisher's supposed mathematical proof of Darwinian evolution. Yet, as the following article points out, the price equation does not explain at all how new systems arise in the species in the first place. It gets them as an input systems already created by an unknown organizational cause. But the Darwinists claim that evolution does create biological system in the price equation like the Hardy-Weinberg law helps exactly zero to explain such creation. So the initial question, how well does math support Darwinian evolution? Here's the short answer. It doesn't support evolution at all. There simply is no realistic mathematical model for Darwinian evolution that Darwinists can appeal to. As leading mathematician Gregory Chaitin himself conceded, it is a mathematical scandal that we do not have proof that Darwinian evolution works. Reality simply does not comport to Darwinian presuppositions. One of the primary reasons why we know that Darwinists will never be able to build a realistic mathematical model for their theory is because there simply is no known law of evolution within the physical universe. A law for, universe, uh, for Darwinists to build a rigid mathematical basis upon. As Ernst Baer himself conceded, in biology, as several other people have shown, and I totally agree with them, there are no natural laws in biology corresponding to the natural laws of the physical sciences. In the following article, Roger Highfield makes much the same observation as Ernst Mayer did and states, Whatever the case, those universal laws, truths, laws, 
that physicists and chemists all rely upon appear relatively absent from biology. And Professor Murray Eden of MIT in a paper that was entitled Inadequacies of Neo-Darwinian Evolution as a Scientific Theory, he stated that the randomness postulate is highly implausible and, a, and that a, an adequate scientific theory of evolution must await the discovery and elucidation of new natural laws, physical, physical, chemical, and biological. In fact, not, not only is there no law of evolution within the known physical universe for Darwinists to build a realistic mathematical upon, the second law of thermodynamics, entropy, a law with great mathematical explanatory power in science, almost directly contradicts the primary Darwinian claim that greater and greater levels of functional complexity can easily be had and or naturally selected for over long periods of time. Indeed, entropy's main claim is that over long periods of time, everything in the universe will decay into simpler and simpler states until what is termed thermodynamic equilibrium is finally reached. As the following video and papers show, entropy is a far greater problem for Darwinists than they are ever willing to openly admit in public. Besides having no physical law to build a realistic mathematical upon, Another reason Darwinists will never be able to build a realistic mathematical model for their theory is that biological form, as the following video shows, is not even reducible to mutations in DNA in the first place, as is presupposed in Neo-Darwinian thought. In fact, Mathematics itself now also proves that the reductive materialistic presuppositions of Darwinist are wrong. In the following article, which extended Gödel and Turing's work on incompleteness to quantum mechanics, and which studied the derivation of macroscopic properties from a complete microscopic description, the researchers remarked that even an even a perfect and complete description of the microscopic properties of a material is not enough to predict its macroscopic behavior. The researchers further commented that their findings challenge the reductionist point of view as the insurmountable difficulty lies precisely in the derivation of macroscopic properties from a microscopic description. Thus, since Darwinists presuppose reductive materialism to be true in their theory, and yet mathematics itself proves that you cannot predict macroscopic behavior from a complete microscopic description, then it is obvious that Darwinists will never be able to build a realistic mathematical model for their theory. And as the following video also shows, recent advances in quantum biology also now show us that Darwinists, with their reductive materialistic framework, are on a completely incorrect theoretical framework to begin with in order to try to understand biological organisms. Thus, with no possible realistic mathematical available to Darwinists to ever rigidly test against, as other overarching theories of science have a rigid mathematical basis to test against, Darwinian evolution therefore does not and never will qualify as a real science, but will forever be more realistically classified as a unfalsifiable, unfalsifiable pseudoscience. 
and here are a few more references that further drive this point home. One concluding thought. Seeing that Gödel has shown that mathematics itself is incomplete and thus mathematics can never have the ultimate truth about reality contained within itself and that mathematics can therefore at best only point us towards the ultimate truth about reality, it is interesting to note that when we rightly let the agent causality of God back into the picture of modern physics, as the Christian founders of modern science had originally envisioned, then an empirically backed reconciliation between quantum mechanics and general relativity into the much sought after theory of everything readily pops out for us in Christ's resurrection from the dead. The following video goes over the evidence supporting that claim. Well, that's the end of the video. And again, I remind viewers that all papers and videos that are referenced in this video may be accessed in the link that is provided in the video description. Thanks for watching.